Claire Flynn um, from okay. Bumblebee Conservation Trust, who uh, we've now managed to make live. Uh, and Claire's going to talk to us about the Skills for Bees Cymru uh, project. She's a Skills for Bees Cymru project officer um, and also other recent work uh, by Bumblebee Conservation Trust. I'm hoping there might be a little look Wales mentioned in there, or Subrek mentioned in there as well. Keep an eye out. Thank you very much, Claire. Uh, your um, you're on until half past. I'll give you a warning with uh, a few minutes to go so that we can get a few questions in. Okay, thank you, Adam. And yeah, thanks to Sue Breck for inviting me. I live down in Pembrokeshire, but I grew up in Pontypool. So um, it always kind of feels like I'm coming home when I'm working with Sue Breck. And yeah, I, those two last presentations were absolutely brilliant. Um, really excited about Natty Rambis and um, Michael, I'm, I think we probably need to talk because um, my project is all about engagement in biological recording and um, I sort of say to people at, at its most basic level what I'm doing in Skills for Bees Cymru is um, engaging people in, in recording in two ways. One is in a very, very structured way and to use your terminology in terms of um, Bee Walk, uh, the Bumblebee Conservation Trust Citizen Science Scheme. And then I call my other bit ad hoc recording, which I shall now call unstructured recording, um, using things like I record and the Lurk Wales app and um, a little nod to POMS as well that I often uh, point people to. So that's my, my semi-structured um bit of engagement if you like so um it might be worth us having a chat at some point because decide looks really really interesting from my project perspective so um as adam said i'm a project officer for skills for bees cymru um, i'm based down in pembrokeshire but working across wales this talk is actually um, not so, so much focused on just my project, but more about our um, wider work in Wales, um, sort of past, present and future. But I will go into some detail uh, on my project because it is a biological recording um, based piece of work. Okay. So, uh, I should say as well, all the photos in the, in the presentation are, are mine from the project we've been doing. So they're all about bumblebees and volunteers in Wales. Um, so I'm gonna give you a little bit of overview of bumblebees as a species group within Wales and um, their current status. Um, a little bit about past projects um, to see where the bumblebees Bee Conservation Trust has focused in the past and how that has led to uh, what we're doing now. And a little bit at the end about um, how you might like to get involved. I have engaged with a lot of you in the Subrac area, um, particularly in the last year, but it would be um, really fantastic to have uh, more recorders in, in the area. Um, aware of what we're doing and uh, submitting bumblebee records. So basically in, bumble, uh, in terms of uh, bumblebees in Wales at the current time, we have 23 um, out of the 24 UK species. I say hopefully because some of them we haven't had records of for some time. But basically, we've got eight uh, what we consider to be um, relatively common and widespread that um, have survived relatively well of the pressures of the last few decades. They're in the box on the left. And these are the species that we generally see in our gardens and in our um, sort of parks and um, the ones that it's most easy to become familiar with as a, as a bumblebee recorder when you are starting out. We have six species of uh, cuckoo bumblebee, which um, exist naturally in much lower numbers than their social bumblebee hosts. Um, and in Wales, it would appear that these are generally under recorded because they're very difficult to identify. 
and we don't have that many people with the skills um, and knowledge to, to um, you know, identify and submit data about these species. But as far as we know, at the moment, we have records for um, all of those six species of cuckoo bumblebee. Always exciting to find a cuckoo. They're quite impressive insects. And there in the box on the right, um, we have our, what we consider to be our more scarce and rare species um, with five section seven species there highlighted in yellow. And for my project specifically, um, we're on the lookout for these um, rare species in terms of going back, like Michael was just saying, go back to going back to sites where they've previously been seen, but also using information from the local record centers to identify new potential sites for these species, which I'll come to in a bit more detail later on. Um, Bombus monticular and Bombus sorensis, the bilberry bumblebee and the broken belted bumblebee there in blue, they're not on our Wales section seven list. But they are, well, in the case of the bilberry bumblebee, they tend to be more restricted by habitat. There is some evidence that it may be declining um, within Wales, but um, we're looking for more data, Michael, which I, I use that phrase now <laughs> with a bit of reservation, but um, more targeted recording, let's say, uh, to find out perhaps a, a more accurate picture of what's happening with that species. And Bombus sorensis, um, incredibly scarce, which I'll go through in some detail in a sec. Um, just so that you know, Cryptorin and, and Magnus, which are starred there, are um, cryptic species within the Bombus leucorum complex. Bombus leucorum, the white tailed bumblebee, which we describe as one of our commoner species is actually a complex of these three starred species. So actually the status of each one of them, um, because that's really getting down to kind of DNA rather than field characteristics, it's actually difficult to make a true assessment of where those three species are um, in terms of distribution and abundance across Wales. And Bombus dis distinguendus, the great yellow bumblebee with a, a great big uh, stripe through through it there. It was recorded in Wales um, many, many decades ago, back at the beginning of the 20th century, and is now only existing in Scotland. And with Bomba sylvarum, the shrill carder is one of our two rarest and most threatened species in the UK. Um, I'll go through some of the rarest species, the section sevens in a little bit more detail for you. Please, if you've got some uh, experience in bumblebee recording, do keep your eyes peeled for these um, in the coming season, um, because uh, yeah, we, we do need to um, sort of address our lack of data of some of these rarer species. So Bombus muscorum, the Moscada, if you look at the map on the right, these maps were produced by um, a piece of work that the local record centers, including Subrec, did for us in 2021 as a, as a contract for Bumblebee Conservation Trust. And I'll come to this piece of work in more detail in a bit, but these are some of the maps that were a brilliant outcome of the work that the Lurks did. And this is a distribution map for Bombus muscorum with the dark red, the deep red squares showing post 2000 data. Um, the orange squares 1980 to 2000 and the yellow squares including pre 1980 data. And it is fairly certain that this species um, as it has across the whole of the UK it has gone in and um, through a decline in its distribution. It tends to favour um, species rich grasslands, very much grassland nesting species. It nests above the ground in rough grass and um, it tends to have a preference for damper grassland. 
um, very coastal distribution, as you can see. And in my experience of recording bumblebees in the last sort of eight years or so, you tend to find it in very, very low um, numbers. And of course, this map shows us only distribution and not abundance. So um, it tends to, uh, yeah, at, at the moment, you know, when if you go out recording in the summer along the South Wales coast, you'll very, very rarely find it in high numbers, even where it does occur. So the brown banded cardabee, Bombus humilis, one of the three cardabees that are really difficult to tell apart in the field. Um, I have to say, uh, I think a lot of us involved in bumblebee recording, you know, our, our sort of um, own, own observations without any scientific uh, sort of um, quantifying indicate that where it occurs, it seems to, um, do quite well and you can see the species quite frequently and across quite big swathes of the um, South Wales coast um, in, in you know in, in the summer in the late summer um, it tends to prefer drier habitats than um, the moss carder and um, again very much a grassland nesting species and um, yeah some days it can be the um, most frequent species that you'll see in a in a in a really nice grassland habitat on the South Wales coast. So um, you know it 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 looks like it's doing relatively well from recent trends. Bomba silvarum, which I'm sure a lot of you are aware, because um, the the Seabrack area has one of the most important populations of this um, the highly fragmented. Uh, bumblebee species down on the Gwent levels and beyond, as I must say. Um, it's again very much grassland uh, bumblebee, um, enjoying uh, species rich grassland again on the South Wales coast and existing now from the dark red squares you can see um, in three distinct populations near me in Pembrokeshire down around Port Talbot, Bridge End, Kemfig area, and on the Gwent levels. Um, so this is the subject of quite a lot of conservation strategies at the moment, um, including its own dedicated 10-year um, conservation strategy, which I'll come back to in a bit. Okay, just very quickly, our two species that aren't on our Section 7 list in Wales, but um, are really, um, in the scale, as I said before, in the case of the broken belted, very, very scarce in Wales, and bilberry bumblebee, Bombus monticola, quite restricted to these um, upland and, and down to the coast where we've got coastal heathland habitats. Um, Sorensis, as you can see from the distribution map, um, very, very uh, limited distribution, even going back um, pre-1980. Um, but now the, the records in recent years are very few and far between. We did find it actually in East Port Talbot this year. Um, and when it was the first time I'd actually ever seen it, and I looked in eye record um, in the autumn, and it was the only record of Bomba sorowensis in eye record for the whole of the UK in eye record at that time. I'm sure it's it's not the only record that was made, but um, yeah, this species is is a very deserving of some focus and effort, but very hard to distinguish um, from very similar bumblebee. Um, more common species, so it takes quite a lot of expertise. Bombus monticola, much more distinctive, very beautiful um, species associated with bilberry, as its name obviously tells us. And this will be a focus of some of the work um, I hope to do with the local record centres this year. Okay. So due to bumblebee declines, the Bumblebee Conservation Trust, going right back here to, to the very beginning, was founded by Professor Dave Goulson in 2006. Due to this massive decline in our native bumblebee species um, in, the, in the previous decades, um, two species have become nationally extinct in the UK and others, including our Section 7s, 
um, have declined dramatically in distribution and abundance. Okay, so um, we have a vision there and a mission, and we um, deliver the objectives within this vision um, through many different ways, through science, through targeted citizen science, um, our Bee Walk scheme, through uh, land manager and landowner advice and active conservation, through to schools, engagement, wider um, campaigns around and a very inclusive campaigns about what people can do for bumblebees who perhaps aren't involved in direct conservation or monitoring. So we have a really wide remit and we have staff of, of about 50 across the UK. OK, so in Wales specifically, I'm just going to give you a little snapshot of what's gone in, on in the past. I know some of you will be aware and some of you won't. So we kicked off in Wales with um, as being part of a very wide ranging UK project, which was one of our first, very first wider engagement projects. Um, and that was backed up by the appointment of a full time conservation officer for Wales, who I think some of you might know. Her name's um, Sinead Lynch. Um, and she she worked uh, extensively doing all sorts of things uh, across Wales um, for the time that she was in post. I came in to work with Sinead on Be Wild West Wales, uh, uh, which was based in Keredig Young Carmarthenshire in Pembrokeshire um, in between 2016 and 2018. And then I delivered a, sh a small uh, sort of taster skills for bees project based on training and monitoring in 2019, which was based around Shrill Carda. We had pastures for pollinators with uh, Calon Wen uh, for the last three years with Anna Hobbs, our conservation officer, our part time conservation officer and also pollinating the levels, which again was myself and Sinead um, in the Subrac area, which finished um, at Christmas, just gone. So um, that's a little snapshot of the past. And again, all of those sort of strands of community, science, recording, conservation, land management, uh, form part of all of that sort of suite of projects. So now, we are um, in a bit of a new phase as some of our other projects came to an end last year. Um, Welsh Landscapes for Rare Bees was a piece of work which is essentially finished, but very much be now being used, the uh, outcomes of that, which I'll, I'll come back to all of these in a bit more detail. Calong Gwenin, um, which follows on from our Pasture for Pollinators project. Skills for Bees Cymru, which is all about recording and training of volunteers, which is my project. Um, Shrill Cardaby Conservation Strategy influences um, other things that we are doing, and Natir Ambis, um, which I think I don't need to go into too much after um, the presentation this morning. So a little bit more detail on those. I'm going to go through quite quickly because I, I want to try and get everything in and not run over. So Calon Gwenin, um, which is Welsh for Bee Heart, was um, a follow-on project from our very successful partnership work with Calon Wen, Pastures for Pollinator um, project. And we produced a booklet, um, which I will put in the chat actually before I leave later, a, a link to this, which was a guide to pollinator-friendly grassland farming with lots of recommendations that came out of our pastures for pollinator work so so tips for farmers and landowners um, but very very much focused on on productive commercial farming um, and what they can do sort of small things they can do to really really um, help improve the habitat for bumblebees and other pollinators so the aim of um, Calong Gwenin is to, to now disseminate that information um, and there's different ways of doing that. I'll be working actually with Callum Gwenin to deliver online webinars. And my colleague will be doing face-to-face -face visits with farms. We're looking at establishment of farm clusters around flagship Callum Wen farms for farmers to gain knowledge, um, understanding and best practice from each other. 
And also I'll be dipping in again to help um, Anna to develop bee walks for ongoing monitoring into the future to see how those measures may affect um, bumblebee numbers um, on, those, on those particular farms. Okay, so that's Callum Gwenin. Skills for Bees in Cymru, which is uh, my, my, uh, my uh, project, which I ab absolutely love. I just, I, my, my, it's my absolute perfect role, combining training and working with volunteers across Wales, across the amazing landscapes of Wales to record bumblebees. You know, no, nothing could be better, really. Um, it's funded by a charitable foundation, the Moondance Foundation. So thank you very much to them. Um, and it's sort of it's my, some of my key aims are to improve our distribution and abundance data of bumblebees through training staff and volunteers. Um, but I should add, especially in, in, in um, light of my, what Michael uh, was saying about the work at CEH, a lot of this project was looking at our um, uneven distribution of bumblebee data across Wales, just like Michael said, you know, we've got lots of records in areas where Bumblebee Conservation Trust has worked before because of the engagement we've done and the volunteers we've trained previously. So that tends to be in South Wales. We've got records where people live, inevitably that always happens. And then we've got loads of records in honeypot areas or honeypot reserves like Castle Martin or where you've got a particular recorder living. Um, and operating. Um, so we, we've, this project was very much based on looking at gaps in data and where we need to, um, you know, fill those gaps and improve ongoing monitoring and be a little bit more um, strategic about how we engage people in this recording. So in doing that, one of, the, one of the ways our structured, if you like, um, recording is to build a network of bee walks, fill gaps where we had no bee walks, of which there were quite a lot, and an increase, Wales, in, increase in Wales-wide bumblebee recording. So there we might talk about our unstructured recording, which is still important, um, and getting people to use the Lurk Wales app, which I'm really passionate about, um, or I record, you know, whatever they're comfortable with, but making sure that data is captured in the right way. And I would say as well, a lot of my finding is that there's so much out there, um, things like iNaturalist and it, all these different apps, you know, the Great British Bee Count, et cetera, et cetera, can be very confusing for people. So part of my role is to make sure people understand um, if you like the steps in biological recording and where data ends up. So I'm very passionate about, you know, um, engaging people in, 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 in apps where their data is captured and goes into our um, national Welsh and UK biodiversity uh, holdings. So as I've said, fill, fill in knowledge gaps, um, geographically and species wise and supporting mentor trainees and developing their skills in bumblebee identification and recording. So that is basically my job. Uh, sorry, this is a bit small. I just slipped this in quickly. Um, it's just a copy of my autumn newsletter just for you to see last a quick quick snapshot of, of last year. So obviously loads of my work was online. We had nearly 200 people attending online sessions there in the, in the box with a Zoom picture. Um, but I did manage to get out into the fields. I surveyed 20 sites with volunteers. Um, last year was mostly in the south. Next year will most, most, mostly be in the west and the north. And despite COVID, I had over 100 people attend uh, bee walk and field ID sessions, which was absolutely brilliant. And 15 species recorded as part of Skills for Bees Wales. So there's a quick, quick few numbers. Okay, so in 2021, um, I partnered with Living Level, so I wanted to bring some CBREC focus to, to my work. And we did a lot, um, 
there last year. This is our, our living levels end of season celebratory recording day, which was absolutely fantastic. And the sun shone. And this is all the volunteers and staff at Tradiga House which was wonderful and quite a lot of Section 7 species recorded that day with lots of excitement. Um, I've partnershiped with Bug Life um, and will be doing so for the next two years in East Port Talbot and also this year starting in Newport. I'm also going to be supporting Nature Isn't Neat with the Gwent Green Grid uh, project. Oh, I've spelt Mama shirt completely <laughs> incorrectly there. I do apologise for that. Um, and also spelt fr uh, friendly wrong. So uh, bear with me on that, folks. Um, yeah, so Monmouthshire be friendly. I'll be working with, with them uh, for training and recording in Monmouthshire. And then next year, hopefully Gower and Vale of Glamorgan. And also, last but absolutely not least, working with Subrec. Um, I worked with Subrec providing training last year, which was brilliant work with in partnership with Elaine which was really good fun and um, I hope to be uh, working more with Elaine this year on some wider recording campaigns hopefully um, in relation to Bombus Monticola the Bilberry Bumblebee. I'm not sure Elaine knows that yet but uh, it should be fun. Okay, moving on, just a little bit more detail about the Shrill Cardi Bee Conservation Strategy. Um, a nod to this because it will underpin a lot of what we do. It underpins a lot of what I do in Skills for Bees Wales, Skills for Bees Cymru. But it will also underpin some of the Natiram Bith work and our wider conservation in work in Wales. So this is a 10 year strategy for this particular species. It is on our website. So that's another document that um, I shall provide a link to. Um, and uh, you know, it's very comprehensive, developed over quite a period of time. So do have a look at that if you um, have particular interest in that species within Gwent specifically, of course. And I'm going to gloss over this because um, I really don't need to uh, try and summarise that fantastic uh, um, uh, presentation this morning in my one single slide. But just to bring your um, attention to the bottom half of the slide, obviously our key role within this big flagship green recovery project is to focus on the Shrill Cardaby. And we have a new staff member, Lawrence, who will be um, sort of, his role is the development phase of our um, place within Natir Ambis. So he'll be working over the coming 15 months to um, focus on Shrill Cardaby and developing our key strands within Natir Ambis, uh, working with landowners, um, creating a network of volunteers and engaging local communities, which of course fits in with the, the wider um, objectives of the overall project. So Lawrence, you will be hearing about Lawrence um, in the coming months as he works within the Subrac area on, on this. Okay, so I'm just gonna go back um, to the piece of work um, delivered for us in 2021 by the local record centres. Another, um, Elaine, if you, if you can put a link to the report in the chat, that would be brilliant because this is such a fantastic piece of work. And I'm not just saying that because I'm doing a talk for Sue Breck, <laughs> but um, it really is fascinating and it's providing me specifically, but the Bumblebee Conservation Trust with some fantastic um, uh, maps and um, which are going to help to inform our um, planning both in conservation engagement and recording in the coming years. Um, so this piece of work was funded by Welsh Government and National Lottery Heritage Fund, um, delivered by the LURCs. And really, we wanted to collate all the sort of um, disparate 
chunks of data on bumblebees that we knew were buried in different places, like some in NRW and some in, you know, the Lurk data holdings and some buried in other places. And we wanted to try and bring all of that together and see what we had with our Section 7 species pretty much um, prioritised within the project. So we did look at all Welsh bumblebee species, but we had target species within that. So focus on rare and scarce species, scarce species, I should say. Um, and they did a fantastic job. I, I'm not going to go into it in, in, in very much detail here, but um, I say the, the, one of the fantastic outcomes were the, these maps that they produced for us with lots and lots of supporting and very detailed information. Um, ah, the, the, yeah, the report, I mean, if you Google that, the report is available online and we can put a link to that. But the maps are very colourful and they need quite a lot of concentration, I will say. So please jump in, Adam and Elaine, if I get anything wrong. I've just pulled a couple out to give you an example of the sort of information they've given us. So this map shows um, numbers of our 23 species um, within 10k squares across Wales. So the deep red ones have um, between 19 and 23 of the 23, and then the lesser, the light, slightly lighter red, 15 to 18 species, dark orange, 10 to 14, and going down to the yellow squares, Yeah, sorry, was uh, sorry, I heard a voice then. Is that okay, Elaine <laughs> and Adam? Yeah, and yellow going down to um, the fewest numbers of species. So you get that is a snapshot, if you like, of where we have the most bumblebee species recorded in any one 10k square. Um, so the yellow, you know, we have we have well, we have two squares with no bumblebee species recorded at all. I have to say now that it's only one square because after I'd seen this when I was driving down from Montgomery to Pembrokeshire I stopped in one of the squares and I went and stood in the churchyard. I was very tired. I'd been on a sort of two-day field trip and I went and stood in the churchyard um, with my car parked alongside and as soon as I'd seen a buff-tailed bumblebee in the churchyard foraging on bramble I recorded it, put it into the Lurk Wales app and then drove home. So one of those squares now <laughs> has a bumblebee recorded in it. Um, so I must I must do the other one um, next year um, as, as soon as I can to, to completely fill, fill the Wales map. But obviously, as Michael was saying, these yellow squares don't mean necessarily that there are very few bumblebees in those squares. It could very well mean that they just have no have had nobody recording there um so there's 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 many assumptions to um be careful of on interpreting these maps but that's all sort of taken into account in the report and inevitably you know around castle martin around castle martin um, and some of these south wales locations where we've got lots of people more recorders um we see more species recorded um, and yeah, the most one of the most complicated and colourful maps, which I, I, I hesitated to put in because I really don't want to confuse people or myself. Um, but basically, this map shows total number of records um, in, ten, in each 10k square. The ones that are in the red tones have one of the rare target species in. The blue toned squares don't. I think that's right. Adam, please forgive me if yeah, I'm no, wrong. That's, that's perfect. That's exactly. Oh. <laughs> so it was a tricky really? one to put together. I just <laughs> well, suddenly massively doubted myself. 
Uh, well, it's, it's the first talk of the season, so you, you know. I'm just thinking, crikey, have I got that right? And yeah, it's quite okay. While, while I've got your attention, we've only got about three minutes left. On right. Okay. Spot. I'm nearly done. I'm nearly done. Okay. I won't go in, but into it here. I just want to point out the great orm of North Wales is is, is under recorded for bumblebees. We all know that that's involved in recording, but the great orm I think beats every other square because we have two fabulous record recorders up there and it's almost all down to them so I just want to pull that out as the, as the probably the best square in Wales okay and this square is absolutely brilliant for me this square this these maps these fantastic habitat maps so Michael this will be of interest to you we've done a they did a lot of correlation on species numbers for individual species and um, habitat correlation data. So I now have these fantastic maps where I can look at some of my target species and look at areas of hopefully ideal habitat where we've got no records. So, so those are gonna be informing my rare survey days in the coming two years. And opportunities to get involved. I'm gonna whiz through these, but basically, my project is all about recording, so you want, may want to join my mailing list and hear about training days, survey days, um, online training, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. We've got Callum Gwanin, um, Natiran Bith will be um, getting up and running now. We're developing our wider volunteering in Wales, so we are going to be looking for people who maybe don't want to be recording, but maybe would be happy getting involved in other ways. So that's another way you can get involved. Um, if you'd like any more info or to get involved with any of this stuff, drop me an email and put Subrek in the subject line and that'll just help me um, file it away in the uh, correct part of my brain and my project. Um, and uh, there's my email there if you want to make a note of that. This was a... Um, a Bombus Praetorum um, done in chocolate by one of uh, our lovely volunteers in Subrac area, uh, Louise. So please do get in touch if you want any more information. And um, yeah, thank you for listening. Any questions? Yeah, thanks, Claire. That's fantastic. But a uh, very comprehensive run through, but some some amazing stuff. And I, obviously, I put a bit of pressure on you then, hoping to hear a mention of um, of the Look Wells project that Subrek led um yeah it, it was it was really good I really urge everybody to click the links the, the links have been coming thick and fast um, brilliant thank you guys everybody will be um will be clicking away afterwards um a couple of quick questions um we had a question from Laura Moss um who we'll be meeting in a few minutes um who asked will Callon Gwenin also cover small holdings as well as farms that's a good question um I can, what I'll do, Laura, I will, um, I'm going to refer you to my colleague, Anna, because I haven't been involved in Callum Gwenin um, or the Pasture for Pollinators up until now. We are going to do a series of uh, webinars coming up, which um, I think if there were small holders, we could um, potentially open that up to them. And certainly the guidelines that have been produced would be very relevant to smallholders. So um, there is a link on our website to the um, guidelines that were pu published, which you could disseminate perhaps to your smallholder contacts. Um, and then I can find out more specifically if those webinars can be opened up to uh, interested people. If, if not, I will be doing work with um, Meadows groups and um, we'll have capacity next year to do some online training with, with, with other groups. So that's another way that perhaps some of your smallholders can connect with us. Thank you. And one last quick one. Alison Jones asked if the report is available for the Pollinating the Levels project. And uh, don't there have been links to most of the projects you mentioned. I think that's one which we uh, haven't shared a link for, but uh, if it does exist, perhaps you could share it. If not, um, yeah, yeah, there there isn't. Um, I was a I was a kind of sm relatively small partner on on the big project that was living levels but within that they had a pollinating the levels uh, section mm -hmm. which is is online there isn't a project uh, report uh, publicly available for my work with them but there will no doubt um 
be a, a, a report for a, a summary report for the wider pollinating the levels work. So if you, you can go online for that and have a look. Um, Sinead's added some links to the actual question itself. So yeah, Sinead, Sinead led on that. So she's got a little bit more information to hand than I have got. Uh, so thanks for that, Sinead. Okay, brilliant, Claire. I think the chocolate bees have been a big hit as well. I think there's the potential there that we could make more wildlife out of chocolates. And <laughs> um, so uh, good challenge there for people as well. I'll try and, try and trump that photo next year, maybe. Um, thanks, Claire. That's brilliant. Thank you. Um,